What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we're gonna talk about some very big changes that came to the workshop with the release of CS2. Now, I know in some of the previous videos, I had mentioned that I didn't think there were gonna be a whole lot of changes to the workshop moving forward. That was entirely incorrect. There are definitely some very big changes that you need to be aware of before you start submitting things to the workshop. So that's what we're gonna talk about inside of this video. I'm gonna briefly go over some of the new workshop tools. I'm just gonna kind of go through that very quickly. And then we really need to talk about colors and the color maps moving forward because those are going to be extremely important so uh, that's what this video is going to be about so anyways let's go Now I know that I got a lot of requests to do a video on the workshop itself. Uh, so I am gonna talk about that very briefly here at the beginning of this video. However, I'm going to kind of speed through this a little bit because when it comes to all of the new changes that came with this game, the workshop is actually the least of your worries. There are a lot of other things that are very important to know before you even get to this point and start setting up your project. Uh, so real quickly, I'm just gonna go through a few of the things that have changed with the new workshop. So the first thing you're gonna notice right off are all of these paint kits right here on the left. You have your solid color, your hydrographic, your spray paint, your custom paint job, your gunsmith. Most of this is going to be fairly familiar to you. Uh, whenever you are ready to start working on a new project, let's say that you want to work on an anodized multicolor, all you simply have to do is select it right here in the left-hand side of your screen. Go up to create and then give your project a name. Let's just call this blah for now and then click enter. And as you can see, we now have a brand new project to start working on. Uh, so that's the first big change when it comes to the brand new workshop. Now, most of these things should be fairly familiar to you. Right up here at the top is where, of course, you would set up your weapon. You have a drop down here where you can select the weapon that you are working on. You can also show a name tag or stat track if you so choose. Uh, right down here, you will notice this checkbox for ignore weapon size scale. We've used that one in the past whenever you were setting up a static weapon. Also, of course, you have your pearlescent right here. Uh, but the things that I really wanted to point out were the major changes. So first and foremost, you'll notice right here on this texture rotation and your offset, you now have nine boxes instead of three. Uh, this is because they've given you the ability now to rotate in both directions. Uh, so if you are setting up a static skim, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set everything in both this column and this column right here to zero. Uh, that is how you would set it up for a static weapon skin. Uh, another big change to this is, of course, how you add your textures. Now, you will notice this file path right here that starts with workshop. If we go over here into our CSGO folder, we go to content, CSGO, and then workshop. This is actually the base file right here where this starts. Now, what I have done is created a designs folder right here. And if we go into it, you'll see one of my projects. And then if we click on it again, you will see all of my TGA files. So if I wanted to add this texture, what I would do is come in here and put workshop forward slash designs forward slash ISO forward slash. And then, of course, the name of my TGA file, which brings me to my next point. You no longer have to use VTF edit in order to convert your files. You can just work directly off of your TGA file. So that's a really cool welcome change to the new workshop. The other big thing I wanted to point out about the brand new workshop tools is that you now have the ability to add multiple maps. Now inside of CSGO, we basically only dealt with color maps and normal maps. Uh, for example, if you want to add a normal map inside of the new workshop, all you have to do is click this button right here and then add the file path of your TGA file. Uh, but a couple things to note, first and foremost, right down here below it, you'll see that we now have the ability to add custom ambient inclusion. And we're going to talk about that inside of the next video. Then right here above it, you also have the ability to add roughness maps. And we're also going to talk about that inside of the next video. I'll show you guys how you can set those up. 
Uh, a couple other things I'll just point out real quick. Obviously, you have your inspect button, which allows you to see your weapon inside of this screen right here. You do have your preview, which allows you to view it inside a game. And then finally, you have your publish button right here on the right. Uh, so real quickly, those are just a few of the brand new things with the new workshop. Now, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm always glad to answer them. However, there are some things that I feel like are much more important to talk about. That's what we're going to talk about throughout the remainder of this video. So the first big major change that I want to talk about has to do with colors inside of the new engine. Now, the new engine uses something known as physically based rendering or PBR for short. And because of this, some of the color values have changed, some of the acceptable RGB values. Now, from this example on your screen, this actually came from the sticker workshop. Uh, you will notice that there are some differences in the color. This most likely will not apply to you on the weapon side of things however the thing I did want to point out are of course these blacks and these whites right here now this is a full RGB range uh, this is what we could actually achieve inside of CSGO however now these have changed dramatically they now start with a very dark gray and go to a lighter gray here at the top uh, you may have noticed that some of the weapons that came over from the old game looked very washed out uh, once you sort of start playing around with this you'll finally understand why a lot of that stuff looks the way it does uh, but this is a big new change to this game and Valve has made it very clear that if you are not staying within the proper ranges that you won't get your work accepted into the game so this is extremely important this is actually on the official Valve Workshop documentation. You can go and you can read this for yourself. However, this is what I really wanted to point out, this part about the physically based rendering. So I'm going to go over this with you real quick. Uh, CS2 uses physically based rendering. Instead of authorizing a diffuse texture as in CSGO, artists will now use an albedo texture, which we're going to talk about later in this video. This texture represents the physical reflectance of the surface. Uh, now these are the ranges that you definitely need to pay attention to for metallic finishes like anodized multicolor patina and metallic portions of the gunsmith. The effective RGB range is most likely between 180 and 250 values as low as 90 may be acceptable depending on the color saturation. So that is for your metallic finishes. For non-metallic finishes, the effective reflectance range is between 55 and 220. Albedo values outside of these values will not respond appropriately to in-game lighting conditions. Pay very close attention to this. Finishes using values outside of the effective PBR range are unlikely to be selected from the workshop. So here they're basically telling you that if you are not keeping your colors within these ranges, you're more than likely not going to have your work accepted. Uh, so this is very important and these are things that you need to know before you start submitting things to the workshop. To give you guys a visual representation, you'll notice that I have this slider right here on the side. At the top of this, we have our brightest white, which of course is 255, and it goes all the way down to black, which is zero. Now, in the previous CSGO game, we used to be able to use the, a full range of colors that went all the way from the brightest colors to the darkest. However, that's not the case with the new engine. For non-metallics, you are going to have to stay between this 220 and 55 range right here. So if you needed to select a color, you could take your black and white slider and maybe move it right here. Then of course you could move your color wheel around and try to find the color that you want. And that's how you would make sure that you're staying inside of these ranges. Uh, also for metallics, you are now going to have to stay in this 250 to 180 range with lows as low as 90, depending on how you set up your saturation. Now, one quick point that I will give you guys real quick whenever you are deciding your colors and which values to use, uh, you want to make sure that you are not using these perfectly exact numbers. You do want to stay just inside of them a little bit uh, because this gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Let's say, for example, I am working in the 75 range and maybe I make a change to my weapon that makes it just a little bit brighter or darker. Uh, this does give me a little bit of wiggle room here. Uh, 
However, if I'm working in a range of like maybe 57 and I change something on my weapon that makes it darker, it's going to push me outside of this range. Uh, so that's just one thing you kind of want to pay attention to as you are working through these projects. Now at this point in the video, if you want to pause it and take a screenshot of this, or I will put this up inside of my drive, uh, this is actually a cheat sheet I put together with all of the hex codes for all of these values. You'll notice that the non-metallic values at 220, you're going to use DC, 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 and then at 55, it's going to be 373737. 37, 37. Uh, so you're definitely going to want to stay inside of these ranges here. Uh, also, I have listed these for the metallics. Again, if you want to take a screenshot of this or go find it in my drive, uh, you are more than welcome to do so. Uh, but I did want to put this together as just sort of a little starting point with using the brand new color ranges inside of the new engine. Now I wanted to do a very quick demonstration of what I was just talking about in the slides when it comes to pushing yourself outside of the PBR range. Uh, you will see here that I have added a color to this slide. This is actually the darkest color that we can now achieve, which is a 55. Uh, this will also explain to you why a lot of the weapons looked very washed out once they moved them over into the new game. Uh, but the point that I'm really trying to make here is that once you you are working on your project, you want to be very careful what you add to it. Uh, let's say, for example, we wanted to add some metallic to this. We want this to look metallic. If I go in here and I bump my metallic value up, notice that this has gotten a lot darker. This is no longer 55 and it has actually pushed it more into the 35 to 40 range. Uh, so by adding metallic to this, once I go to burn my albedo map, which we'll talk about next, I'm actually outside of that range. So whenever it comes to things like adding metallics, uh, even adding roughness, you know, even bumping this roughness up, you'll notice that it has gotten a lot darker. So when you are working on your initial project and you are setting your colors up, you really don't want to change any of these values. You want to work on base flat colors like this. Uh, and then once you have your design and your color maps exported, then whenever you get to work on other things like your roughness maps and things like that, you can come in here and start changing these values around. The next thing I want to talk about is Albedo maps, because Albedo maps are going to be what you are going to use for your projects moving forward inside of the new engine. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what this is, an Albedo map is basically just a flat map of colors. There is no lighting information added to it. Now, I did put up a video a couple of weeks ago about lighting, and then I took it down the very next day. That's because I received the information that we were no longer going to be using mapping that had lighting information in it. So that video was really not going to be useful to you anymore. Uh, but real quickly, I want to show you guys the difference so you kind of get a better understanding of them. Now, as you can see, this is the first UV map that I burned off before I found out this information. You'll notice that we can see the creases here inside of the magazine. Parts of it are lighter and darker. That's because I used lighting to sort of create this metallic effect. Uh, however, moving forward using Albedo maps, they're actually going to look like this. They're just going to be very flat and they're only going to have colors added to them. Now, there's a couple of different reasons for this. First and foremost, the engine itself is going to create your lighting information. So we don't have to force it on the object to make it look metallic anymore. We actually have an engine that will make things metallic for us. Uh, the other reason, obviously, these are a lot smaller in size. They don't take up as much space. So that's obviously a big win for Valve. Uh, but real quickly, I do want to show you guys how you can create Albedo maps inside a blender. So real quickly, I just threw this Glock together and threw some stuff on it so that I could show you guys this process. Uh, obviously, first and foremost, we want to go to our shading tab. And as before, we want to add an image texture. Uh, so I'm going to hit shift A, go to texture, image texture. We're going to create a UV. Let's just call this UV. And I'm going to make this 2048 by 2048. Uh, 
Now, bear in mind with the new engine, you can go all the way up to 4096 with everything. That's just completely up to you based on your hardware and whether or not you want to do that. Uh, however, one thing I noticed is that when you take this into the workshop, it does compress it back down to 2048. I don't know if that's going to be necessarily the process when it comes to publishing or not because I haven't quite gotten that far. Uh, but you can go all the way up to 4096 if you so choose. Now I'm just going to go ahead and create my UV. Uh, next, we're going to go over to our UV editing tab and we're going to set up our render settings. Let's change this to GPU compute. We're going to go down here to film, turn on transparency. We're going to go down to bake and go to our margin. Uh, now, in some of the earlier videos, I told you guys to set this to zero. However, I have noticed in some of my designs, there are some little pieces sometimes where the color doesn't fully wrap around. Uh, so for me personally, I've actually been bumping this up to one pixel. That just makes sure that it runs just slightly outside of the object on the UV and make sure that the entire thing gets covered uh, once we are done with that we're going to go right here to our bake type we're going to drop this down to diffuse and then right here below it you'll see this contributors and what we want to do is we want to actually turn this direct and indirect off and what this is actually doing is it's getting rid of all of the lighting information inside of our project uh, so that's why I took the lighting video down because you're no longer going to have to depend on lighting in order to light your projects up so once this is done, we can go ahead and click bake. As you can see, my render has finished and you will see my UV over here on the left. Uh, these are all just very flat colors, but they are all even. There was no need to go in and add any sort of lighting in order to get it even all the way throughout our project. Uh, so moving forward, this is going to be the new standard. This is how you are going to make your color maps. You're going to want to go right here to bake. You're going to want to set your bake type to diffuse. And then under contributors, you just want to make sure and turn off both the direct and the indirect lighting. The last thing I want to show you guys in this video is how to check your colors once you finally get them to the workshop to make sure that all of your colors are within the proper ranges. So the first thing you're going to want to do is while you are in the preview mode, you're going to want to open up a console and then you're just going to want to type in the command matte Fulbright and then the number 10 and hit enter. Now, as you can see, I have already checked this weapon out. I do still have a few little areas where you can see that it is flashing blue. I'm going to have to go in and fix those. However, if you have an entire color that is not correct, this entire part right here would actually flash blue. Uh, so this is a very useful command. You know, once you are done with your design, with your color maps, you are going to want to bring them over inside of the workshop and use this command to make sure that all of your colors are in the proper ranges. Then once you are done, we can type in this command again, Matt Fulbright, and add the number zero to the end of it. And then we're back to normal. Uh, so that is a very useful command that I wanted to make you guys aware of. You are going to want to use this moving forward to make sure that your colors are fitting within the proper PBR range uh, for the new engine.